Jack, the famous symbol of Great Britain, and one of England's most beautiful regions is Yorkshire in the northern part of the country. It's rich in history. It's got some of the greenest and most unspoiled nature in the whole of England. Dramatic coastlines, remote beaches and a great surfing scene. The picturesque villages and harbours are magnets for tourists from all over the world. And since last year, Yorkshire has also attracted the mountain bike elite. Dalby Forest will be host of round two of the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup presented by Shimano. It's only the second time that the famous National Park is a World Cup venue, but it's already made it to the top. It was voted the best World Cup round in 2010. The evening before the race, the small town of Pickering is getting ready for a very special event. Lifting cross-country racing out of the forest and putting it into an urban setting, combining it with four cross elements, the event pulls thousands of spectators that line the streets of the town. Yeah, I think it's a really good um, challenge for me. You know, I've always been racing four cross. Um, this is a little bit more, you know, different and longer than four cross, but uh, I think it's a good challenge. And, uh, you know, if you see all the crowd tonight, I'm already so excited that I made the decision to actually come here to uh, Dalby and uh, to go racing this uh, sprint race. Well, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool race. It's a sprint race around the, the city. It's a short lap. It's going to be around one minute. It's a different sport, but it's, it's, it's good for that we have something, another discipline for cross-country riders. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward for the race. One of the local heroes and the current downhill world champion is Tracy Mosley, and she's also looking forward to tonight's race, which takes place in Pickering for the second time now. Tonight I'm here doing the Pro Sprint Eliminator at Dolby Forest uh, World Cup round, so it should be pretty, pretty entertaining. Uh, race around the streets of the local town with tons of people watching, and then on Sunday, I'm going to have a go at my first ever World Cup cross country race, so even more interesting. Uh, I've always ridden cross country, you know, from back in the day when I started downhill racing. I used to race downhill on a cross country bike, so cross country racing has always been something I've, I've done for fun. Um, and having the chance to come and race in front of a home crowd at a World Cup, I've always loved the experience at down, um, with Fort William with the downhill World Cup. So to come here at Dolby, had a free weekend and be doing a bit more cross country than in previous years, decided to uh, come and enjoy it, hopefully. And she's not the only special guest star. I didn't do some training, uh, specific training for like three years now, ever since I retired from four cross. I just ride my bike and, you know, I do some racing, but no specific training for anything. So uh, for one month, I do a little bit specific training for this and, uh, you know, just come have some fun and, and see. I, you know, I hope to do good, but I don't know. Lopez won more World Cups than any other rider, but who will be the king or the queen of the streets? While the crowd of Pickering gets entertained by the local Spice Girls, the women's final is about to start. The last four women are Swiss rider Katrin Leumann, local hero Annie Last, Alexandra Engen from Sweden and Natalie Schneider from Switzerland. And coming down the steps, Schneider is in the lead, followed by Leumann and then Last. Racing through private back gardens, Schneider takes control of the pace, giving Leumann no opportunity to overtake. Schneider still in first position, pedalling hard. Last is trying to attack Leumann, but can't manage to get past the Swiss rider. Sprinting here up the entire length of the high street, the local hero Last is launching another attack. The Brit is taking second place in front of Leumann. Natalie Schneider wins the street race here in Pickering. Oh, it was great. I could just take the lead from the start line on and um, yeah, defend, defend the, the first position. And it was perfect run. I had a good start and I'm very happy. Last year I was second, so perfect. So there we have the winner of the Pro Sprint Eliminator, Natalie Schneider from Switzerland. The men's final, and we've got the Swiss riders, Sepp Freiberghaus and Thomas Litchier, the Aussie pole, Van der Plug and Italian Marco Fontana. Van der Plug has the best start and is followed by Fontana and last year's Pro Eliminator winner, Litchier. The four riders make their way through the gardens, Litchier moved up into second position in front of Fontana, and Van der Plug still holding on to his top spot. 
But van der Plerg is just unstoppable. Lopes and Schurter, both out in round one, already joined the crowd to witness a breathtaking sprint by the Aussie rider, finishing way out in first place. Litcher second, Fontana third. It was unbelievable, like in the final I just wanted to go out hard and then try and hold the lead. So I was just full gas up the start, down the stairs and then I knew that the climb was going to be the way where you get a gap or you get caught so I just gave it everything and then uh, yeah, that came off. Paul van der Plug congratulated Fontana and Lidscher for their second and third places and the next Pro Sprint Eliminator will be at the World Cup in Offenburg in a week's time. From the city of Pickering we head straight into the woods of Dalby Forest. The course in Dalby Forest is six and a half kilometers long with lots of fun technical sections and two big climbs. We're gonna get the lowdown from the current world champion, Jose Antonio Hermida. Hi, I'm Jose Hermida from Spain. I'm the talented guy in mountain bike. <laughs> so, welcome to Dalby Forest for a World Cup. So we start in a gravel road like last year, then a little bit in the field with a, in the expo area in the grass section. So suddenly we just make uh, some single trails down. We join a contour road that is going to be a, it's a gravel road where normally people use it for a recovery and this time it's going to be a, the place where everybody wants to pass the other rider because it's uh, really narrow the course the whole time. And um, well, we are going to, a special place to watch is going to be the three-way uh, uh, rock drop. So it's going to be a technical part because there are different ways for technical riders, for uh, riders with uh, less skills, uh, technical skills, they are going to choose the right section. Then it's going to be the same course like last year with a special drop in the middle of the forest, then a long downhill, technical and tricky, also slippery because it's going to be a little bit muddy uh, section. And uh, especially something to watch after that is going to be the Medusa drop. This is a pretty special uh, place where uh, everybody is gonna is gonna try to do his best in a technical section. Then we have the last climb to the finish area. Well, there are some sections, a special section for uh, technical riders. So Nino and Absalon, they have to double check. But it's not only Nino and Absalon who have got to do some double checking. Right now, it's time for the women to get warmed up for this challenging course. Can Ren Chang Wan, winner of the first World Cup, repeat her victory here in Dalby Forest? Wearing the World Cup leader jersey, it's Ren Chang Wan from China, then Julie Brasset from France, Canadian rider Catherine Pandrell. There goes the starting signal, and this field of 83 riders have five challenging laps and about 32 kilometers ahead of them. Cheng Yang having a great start, which is the key to success on this track. There's the specialized rider, Lena Bieberg, just taking a quick look over her shoulder as she finishes the starting loop, closely followed by her teammate, Cheng Wang, Ren Cheng Wang wearing the leader's jersey, setting the pace. But here she makes a mistake and goes down. Her front wheel slipped out on the corner. And this is going to be a big advantage for Natalie Schneider, who's now right on her tail. This course has a lot of single tracks, so it's really important to be up front from early on. Just like Cheng Wang has done, she's still out in first position, making her way down the rocky downhill section called Worry Gill, closely followed by Schneider and Bieberg. Climbing back up the other side, the Chinese is taking the longer right line. The chasing group nowhere in sight. One rider who will not appear at today's race is the Russian rider Irina Kalantiva, who failed to obtain her visa in time. Here we can see the rest of the following group getting off and carrying their bikes up the hill, but they're a long, long way behind Cheng Wang. 
One guy who's never far behind is Matt Opperman from the Subaru Gary Fisher Pro Team. Basically, Matt's the one who keeps us rolling all the time. Uh, he starts early in the morning cleaning our bikes, making sure everything's rolling, shifting's good, forks are feeling good. Basically, everything's 100% ready to go so that we can go out there and do the best we can. He's arguably, I'd say, one of the most important pieces of equipment we have. He's a mechanic that's very in tune with listening to the rider and hearing what they have to say. Uh, I think it's very important that you learn to communicate on a level that uh, you know the athlete can get across what they're what they're trying to say or or um, what changes they need done. Day of the race, uh, pretty much same thing. Early morning, uh, again, just uh, final check through the bikes, air pressures and lube, and uh, again get our. Um, all our spares uh, prepped for the technical zones um, because you know we, we need to have uh, you know all the spare wheels and tires and you know parts that we would want in the tech zone in case there's a problem. So uh, and then so when the race goes, you know usually there's a mechanic at the start line to cover any problems that may happen there or any changes, uh, and then it's a scramble for the technical zones and. Uh, so a lot of running involved typically on race day. I trust Matt 100%. I've never had any problems with him. He's awesome. I'd say he's the best mechanic on the circuit. And who's the best woman on the circuit? Finishing the first lap, the French rider Julie Bresset, one of the youngest riders in the field, is holding on to a second position behind Cheng Wang. The battle of the short dual descender. Bressa chooses the fast technical rock line instead of the longer flowy line, and it's a good choice. She overtakes Cheng Wang and is now out in the lead. Approaching the feed and tech zone, the current world champion Maya Voslovska in third, Catherine Pendrel in fourth, and Beijing Olympic gold medalist Sabina Spitz, the eldest woman in the field, back in fifth. <laughs> the current World Cup leader and winner of the first round in Peter Maritzburg, Cheng Wang, is still leading the race, closely followed by Brissette. So one and two, the number play tells it all. They're the top two women leading the field at the minute. Luna team rider Catherine Pendrell in third position, but she's got to watch out for the two rainbow striped shirts of Vlashovska and Spitz, plus the Danish national champion Annika Langvard, who are right behind her. The Canadian Luna girl coming down the technical worry gill section. Changing weather conditions with sun and rain taking it in turns and making the race even harder. And the French rider out in the lead, battling against the strong winds. Downhill world champion Tracy Mosley, who finished seventh in yesterday's Pro Sprint Eliminator, back in 68th position, trying for a top 60 to get enough points to qualify for the next race. As they come through the tech and feed zone, Cheng Wang takes a quick break from pedalling and lets Bresset pass her. The master of the technical zone, Matt Opperman, is happy with the race so far. It's a uh, nervous time, so, but it's good. We can, we've got the Jumbotron there, so we can kind of keep track of what's going on. And also, we can see him a lot on the downhill here. So. But Emily's doing well, and so we're happy. Bressitz has managed to pull away a really remarkable performance for someone who's not yet in the elite category, but right up in the top of the rankings, challenging for a win. Cheng Wang doesn't look aggressive hitting the physical brick wall. If she maintains this gap, she won't win her second World Cup in a row. And there she is. She's only 21 years old and on the best way to win her first World Cup. If Reset takes home victory today, she would take historically the lead in both the under 23 and in the elite categories. And that's never happened in women's mountain biking before. The Chinese girl's dropping back dramatically. She's got nothing left in her legs and she can't keep up with the pace. Cheng Wang's not even in the chasing group anymore. The Danish rider Langvag in second place, looking as though she's going to get the first podium finish for a Danish cross-country rider. The German rider Sabina Spitz glued onto a back wheel. 
And here as she comes in to finish her last lap, the young French woman made mountain bike history. Julie Brazet is ecstatic. After this sensational victory, she's going to be wearing the leader's jersey for the next UCI World Cup in Offenburg. What a day. And here's the Danish woman sprinting towards the finishing line. Annika Langbad, who's never made a World Cup podium, takes second place and screams for joy. Followed by Sabina Spitz in third, her first World Cup podium since the Olympics. And the rest of the field, we've got Lechner in fourth, Cheng Wan fifth, Voschlowskoska in sixth, Pendrel seventh, Biberg in eighth. I'm very happy today uh, to win. Uh, for me, it's a nice revelation. Uh, I am very <laughs> surprised. So here's the podium for round two of the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup in Dalby Forest. A very, very happy winner, the French under-23 rider Julie Prezet, riding for Bihar Suntor Paisi Valendry. And a second place in round one and a victory in round two puts Julie Brazet in the World Cup leader jersey, followed by Cheng Wang, Langvard and Spitz. Now it's time for the men to warm up their muscles for the second World Cup race of their season. And here we've got the top three riders. The Czech rider Yaroslav Kolhavy, Julian Absalon from France. And there's the Swiss guy, Nino Schurter. We've got 130 riders getting ready to go. There goes the starting signal. And it's the Italian champion, Marco Fontana, who's had a very good start moving out to the front. Manuel Fumic taking the center line next to Nino Schurter. And the men's field having six laps ahead of them. Here we see the world champion colours of Jose Hamida taking the lead, chased by World Cup leader Nino Schurter, the German rider Manuel Fumic, and Italian national champion Marco Fontana. The Spanish rider can hold on to his top position. Nino Schurter ties on his heels. But where's Schurter's biggest rival, Julian Absalon? Last year, both riders had a very memorable battle here in Dalby Forest. Last year, it was a really exciting race with a really exciting finish with uh, Stan and Berry, Nino Schurter and me and I finished at sprint with Nino and I was really close from the victory because maybe 10 centimeters I was first in the last um, line and, and Nino passed me at maybe five meters of the finish line and we were really close but uh, he won the sprint so I will try this year to don't lose the sprint. Yes, I did some specific work because um, the sports uh, is a little bit different now. We have some new rules with, um, with shorter race, with uh, shorter track, with, uh, and we need more to have more aggressivity during the race. So I did some, I did some little change on my training. I changed to have more explosivity because now we need a lot of explosivity because the climbs are short so, and the downhill are short, so we don't have recovery during the race, but we need to, to climb really, really fast and short climbs, so um, we need to do a lot of short intervals to, to be really, really competitive. I hope I will not arrive each time with Nino at sprints, because in mountain bike sometimes you can do the difference before the sprints. We rejoin the race with specialized team rider Yaroslav Kolhavy, who's taken over the lead. Julian Absalon currently back in sixth position, and his biggest rival Nino Schurter, four places ahead of him, determined to win the race in Dalby Forest once again. Yeah, it was an awesome uh, battle between Absalon and me. Uh, it was my first uh, World Cup victory in here, and I was quite happy to win this race in uh, such an exciting finish. Absalon is, is always a favorite. Uh, he's, uh, he's really strong and on every on every track, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that he will again uh, fight here for, for a place on the podium, but uh, yeah, I try as well my best. OK, so we've got world champion Nino Schurter right behind Colhavy, with some really difficult weather conditions blowing sand in the faces of the Cannondale team in their yellow shoes as they come down one after the other. 
the gap between the Czech and the chasing group is getting bigger and bigger. Kulhavy, who with 1m86 is one of the tallest riders in the field, absolutely powering through the very technical climbing sections, getting a big advantage. Battling with the strong winds, Schurt is trying to leave the chasing group behind him, but Fumix not letting him get away. And while all of the eyes are on the current World Cup leader, it's not only the riders, but the people behind the scenes that play a big role in racing. <laughs> Top peak here gone racing team mechanic Lars Hartwich tries everything to give his riders the best bike for the track. If I have time on the course where we have the race, and it's good for me to see what the guys I have to do in the race, what are the technical positions and it's good for me to see if we have two technical zones which one is more important and we can talk in the afternoon on the dinner what, what are on the course what's special and what's a good line to ride and yeah this is what i do also if i have a little bit of time yeah, the future of cross country mountain biking is um, for the course the courses are going more and more extreme more technical with more extreme descents and yeah, it's going more technical and for the bikes, it's important to build uh, very light bikes with light, light spare parts and good brakes, good working suspensions and you have now in the suspensions also uh, carbon technology and yeah, the future is definitely going lighter and lighter. And riding his 29er wheels, Kulhavy's still out in the lead. With the strong winds, it's going to be a very technical race and not just about the power like it was back in South Africa. There's the man that we've been waiting for, double Olympic gold medalist, Julian Absalon, now in second position, fighting his way to the front. Fumik, Schurte and Fontana way behind him. Finishing his first lap on the fastest cross-country tack of the world circuit, Yaroslav Kolhavy holding on to his top position. Crossing the line in second position, Julian Absalon only 20 seconds down. 25 seconds behind Absalon comes the chasing group with Schurte, Sauser, Fumik, Fontana, Stander and Tempia. Speeding through the feeding zone, Absalon is trying hard to close the gap. But behind him the chasing group, this time led by Manuel Fumik, the riders taking turns who's in the front and who's making the pace. The French master of race tactics has brought down the gap. He is determined to win his 23rd World Cup title. Keeping his cool, the Czech rider still holding on to his pace, knowing that the French legend Julian Absalon is going to be trying to catch him up. And here we've got the chasing group, still working together, led by Nino Schurter. Still 20 seconds behind Colhavy after the second lap, Absalon keeping his fast pace. Kulhavy coming through the feed zone, and he's not even taking on any water. The chasing group start their third lap. Out in the lead, South African Burry Stander making the pace. The riders trying hard to catch up to the top two riders, Absalon and Kulhavy, and they're working really good together on the course like a team. And here's the man who can still take the win away from Kulhavy, Julian Absalon getting some energy gel in the feed zone. Meanwhile, a lot of the riders are having trouble with technical difficulties or just this very challenging track. Still riding strong, the Czech leader, followed by Absalon. And there's the chasing group, Sauser, Fumik, Fontana, Stander, Maxi Morota, constantly swapping paces, working like a peloton. Not moving from his first place is Kulhavy, and not even Absalon can change it. So here we go, the Czech national champion, Yaroslav Kulhavy, takes home his second World Cup win and becomes the first rider to win a World Cup on a 29-inch wheel. And just to show how cool he is, he gets off his bike and carries it across the finishing line. A second place in Peter Maritzburg and now a second place in Dalby Forest for Julian Absalon. And here's the big sprint of the day. Coming around the corner for the exciting finish, Fontana's out in front, followed by Marotta, Fumik and Moritz Malatz. And it looks like Fontana gets his best World Cup results so far, coming in third. 
Fourth place goes to Marotta, Fumik fifth, Milat sixth, Stander seventh, Sousa eighth, and a disappointing ninth place for Schurter. And the happy winner, Kolhavi. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I was uh, better and the uh, race was uh, really good for me. So the podium for the second round of the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup in Dalby Forest. Yaroslav Kolhavi taking first victory as a full-time pro riding for Specialized. And it's the first time that the Czech rider leads the World Cup overall ranking, followed by Absalon, Schurte, Fontana, Fumik, Maurovda, Hermida and Stander. So we're going to say goodbye from an exciting second round in Dalby Forest. And we're going to see you in Offenburg next weekend. Take it easy.